Boas here with Next Pittsburgh. I'm here in Oakland checking out the Frick Fine Arts Building. If you're like me, you've walked by this building a billion times and sort of wondered, is this some sort of convent? What sort of stuff is happening in here? Well, today we're getting answers from Sylvia. And Sylvia, what's your title here? Hi, I'm Sylvia Aurora. I'm the director and the curator of the University Art Gallery at the University of Pittsburgh, which is one of the things you're going to find behind these doors right here. Oh my gosh, well, let's go inside. Sure, come on in. I know a lot of you have been like Boaz, and you've <laughs> actually passed by. You're right on Shenley Plaza next right. to the Carnegie Public Library, but also on the University of Pittsburgh campus. I know a lot of people don't realize that this is part of the University of Pittsburgh, so I'm going to take you behind the scenes right now. Sweet. Oh, wow. So it's really, I mean, a pretty unique architecture here already. Here we're seeing this amazing courtyard over here. It feels very European. Exactly. Actually, you're hitting it right on the head, the nail on the head. This is supposed to look like a Renaissance palace, a Florentine palace from the 15th century. But in fact, it was built in 1965. At the height of the civil rights movement, Helen Clay Frick decided to build something that looked like a Renaissance palace to house the history of art department, the um, studio arts department, a library, a gallery, and this magnificent cloister. So let's take a look at what's in this cloister. Um, some of you probably can't even imagine that this is in the middle of Oakland because it looks like you're in the middle of Florence. On the walls are a whole bunch of reproductions of Renaissance paintings. And the Renaissance paintings were actually painted by a Russian artist at the beginning of the 20th century. So the artist Nicholas Lokov was commissioned by the Moscow Museum of Fine Arts to go to Italy and to paint reproductions. Nicholas Lokov was sent there in 1911. Things got a little sketchy in Russia by 1917, so he was stranded in Italy with all of these reproductions. Wow. Right. So Miss Frick, as she was known, Helen Clay Frick, the daughter of Henry Frick, when she was building this building, through another art historian, brought these here. So this entire cloister was built to house these reproductions. All of these works are very familiar to a lot of people who have studied the history of art, but actually who just know culture. Yeah. So they walk into this cloister, and this is a public area where we have parties, we have classes, we use it for teaching. But what a lot of people don't know is right there is the gallery. So right now, here is the entrance to the University Art Gallery at the University of Pittsburgh. Let's go in and see what's happening. So we have rotating exhibitions every year. So in this room, we are focusing on an exhibition called The Kingdom of This World Reimagined. And you can see on the walls, there are a bunch of works that actually focus on the Haitian Revolution and a book about the Haitian Revolution. So this is a traveling exhibition that was curated by another curator named Leslie Wolf at another institution. Oh, wow, this is getting trippy in here. I love this. You're gonna see a real difference from the front gallery and <clears throat> into this gallery. So all of a sudden, everything has changed. You're probably starting to feel the 30-foot ceilings. We are in this space that's called the Rotunda. And the Rotunda, if you see that inscription above the door, was originally dedicated to Helen Frick's mother. So there was an organ in this space that was supposed to play out and fill the space with music. The organ's gone. It's been donated to a church. And since we've been here over the past five years, we've been using this for artistic installations. So what you're looking at right now is an installation called Agua Firme. And Agua Firme was commissioned by um, us, by two artists, Cherezade Garcia and Ileana Emilia Garcia, two sisters, two Dominicans, to create this space. They came here when there was nothing in the, in the whole space in May of last year. And they said, it was empty, it was a Pittsburgh day, and they said, is Pittsburgh always this gray? <laughs> and I said, yes. And they said, well, we're going to bring a little bit of the Dominican Republic to Pittsburgh. So you hear the sounds of the ocean, you see the images of movement, and you see something that really speaks to Caribbean identity, to migration, to immigration, and the overlapping levels of identity that these two artists have as Dominican women. As you walk back here, the vibe changes again, completely. So what you're looking at here is a student curated exhibition. So we have a growing museum studies program at the University of Pittsburgh, and students actually get hands-on experience curating exhibitions. And our students this year curated an exhibition on these amazing posters. So these posters are part of the uni university um, collection through the libraries of Puerto Rican posters, original silk screens from 1958 to 1963. Each student got to research a poster. Sometimes they got to write the labels and write the texts and give tours. These exhibitions will run through March 24th, and we're going to have a big closing party on March 24th. Okay. So put it on your yeah. calendars. There's more. Yeah. A lot of people 
would walk right past this and go out the front door, but you're not going to. Oh my gosh, there's a secret trap door. It's my favorite. Secret trapped door. So you're now in the UAG study room. And what we do in the study room is actually look at artworks from our permanent collection. So we have hidden behind these doors about 3,500 works of art from various time periods. So I thought you might want to take a look at a few of them. So uh, best practice is we're putting on our gloves to look at this. One of the ones I really want you to see is if you look in here, you're going to see just a little box. But I'm going to take out this little thing. It looks like some sort of oil lamp. It is an oil lamp. It's about 2,000 years old. It was donated to our collection. It's an ancient Roman oil lamp. And this is what we use to teach, teach our students, to teach the public, to bring out for special events. So some of these other objects you're looking at here, this is one of my faves. This is um, a wood block from the artist Gertrude Quastler. And we have the full collection, almost full collection, of Gertrude Quastler's prints and actually the blocks from which they were printed. And you see here this beautiful wood block, but guess what we get to do in this study room? Is show you the back. Oh, wow. There's a whole other print. There's a whole print. other print on the other side. So oftentimes, Gertrude Quastler was very economic, but also very creative. She would use both sides of a wood block. And we also get to do things like study Inuit carvings from Canada. So these are Inuit carvings of a mother and child where we think about indigenous cultures. And what we get to do in the study room is something you don't get to do in exhibitions, which is touch it, turn it around, and look underside at tags and different aspects of the artworks so that we can actually use this to teach our museum study students and actually students across the curriculum. Yeah. This is an, a painting called Dumping Slag. I don't know oh. if you know what slag is. Yeah, I mean, it's like in the steel making yep. process. I was wondering if that was a horrible accident, but they're just purposefully dumping something off that train. It's funny. You see that as a horrible accident. Some people look at that and say, oh my God, that's my fondest memories of childhood of seeing slag being dumped. So everybody has a different a feeling of this. This is a painting from 1947 part of what we call the gimbal art collection. And this artist went out to show these slag heaps, the slag dumping that was part of the steel process. Here's another object over here. Looks like nothing. Yeah, it looks like sort of a weird table upside down. <laughs> what do you think it does? What kind of artwork do you think this is? Well, it looks like reflective. Maybe you could like shoot lights or lasers through it? You are right, sort of. <laughs> so it is reflective and you can see it has a plug. This is an artwork from 1971 by an artist named Wen Ying Tsai. When you plug it in, it dances and moves um, according to sound and to light. So one of our graduate students is working on this and thinking about conservation of this work. So you see in this case, all of our files about this little number. Oh, wow. And what we're seeing here in the cloister too is that the studio art students and faculty often use the space of the cloister to make contemporary art installations or use it as part of class. Professor Sean Morrissey uses the cloister with their students every semester. So you're starting to see this installation start to come out and eventually the whole cloister will be part of this decoration. Wow. Okay, we're going in the library. So this is the Frick Fine Arts Library. This is actually the art research library at the University of Pittsburgh. Helen Frick actually um, gave this in the name of her father. So all of this is for her family's legacy. This is our main art research library as part of the university library system. And as you can see, it's one of the most beautiful libraries on campus. And there's wonderful, beautiful tables, display cases, and even browsing shelves. We welcome visitors, so this isn't just for students. You can come here and read and look at the magazines and browse works. And this is our lovely cloister. This is actually um, always open to the public. So when you we bring your lunch out here sometimes? I, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> when I have time for lunch, this is where you're going to find me. Or maybe out on Shenley Plaza. Yeah. Well, what a beautiful space. Thanks so much for showing That's us around. So yeah. You, I really enjoyed having you. Please come back. We have open hours, and please follow us on Instagram and, and also on our website. So we hope to see you in the gallery.